now we're going to get to our wonderful... I don't, I don't want you to come to my house is all I can say because you would be you would be like she's my number she one mind. client this is <laughs> no, we are glad to have with us this morning Helene Segura and she is with tell us Living Order SA right exactly Living Order SA short for Living Order San Antonio okay well I, I you know a couple of weeks ago I had some major company coming in and so I had to go through it took me three days to clean get rid because you know it's just my husband and I there now so I kind of let things slip and go do other things and then when people are coming in I'm like oh they can't come and see my house looking like this oh so <laughs> oh that would be that's, t- <laughs> <laughs> that's totally me I would be walking around going oh a good grief oh, so good grief. <laughs> so Helene tell us a little bit about what you do where you go. I mean, just tell us everything about you right now. Sure. Our whole motto is to help our clients kick chaos to the curb. So I have a residential organizer on my team. Her name, her name is Magdalena McCall, and she works with busy homeowners, whether it's a stay-at-home mom or an executive mom. She helps them with their time management, their space management, setting up systems and routines in their home so that way things flow much better. And I work with the business component. So I work with a lot of entrepreneurs who spent a couple of years hustling out there for their next client and they were so busy trying to get business that when they got successful they didn't have systems in place because they had not thought about the infrastructure they need to have to run a business well they had thought about where's my next client how am I going to pay my bills so through Living Order SA we help both homeowners and business owners get organized I can so relate to that. We were talking about it earlier. (laughs) And I'm going, okay, systems. Okay, Helene, tell me systems. Mm -hmm. Yes, paper management. Even though we live in a digital society, paper is still the number one request that we get for getting help because there is entirely too much of it. And then after that, it's time management. And sometimes paper management is related to time management. We have so much going on, and we're pulled in so many different directions, especially as women. Linda and I were talking earlier that there's some kind of unwritten rule out there Mm -hmm. that all women have to bring some kind of income home. They have to be the only ones to take care of the kids. They have to be the only ones to take care of the house. And we're reminded of that whenever we read those headlines on the magazines, when we're checking out in the grocery store. And that's a lot of pressure. So part of what we do is we talk about time management and how can you have others help you in this process what if you're it (laughs) <laughs> well, if you're it, it's really important to gather a support team around. Mm-hmm. Your kids are a part of your support team. Yes. Your friends are a part of your support team. Your church is a part of your support team. And it's really important that we all help each other out. So you outline all of those things for us and tell us exactly how we need to to use those in order to make our lives a little bit more productive? Yes, everybody is different. We all have a different lifestyle, a different Mm -hmm. work schedule, a different brain type, different personalities. So it's really important that you find something that works for you. Just because you saw something on TV does not mean it's going to necessarily work exactly for your life. So it's really important to find out a customized solution for you. What do you think the number one I think a challenge is, especially for business owners? I would say it's time. Because as a business owner, especially if you have a a small company, you're an entrepreneur, this, in effect, is your baby. So Mm -hmm. you are creating it and you are molding it, and it's very hard to separate that line between your business and your personal life because Mm -hmm. it all gets intertwined together. So that's one of the toughest challenges out there is making sure that you still have a personal life outside of your business. And I just want to remind our listeners right quick because I know there are people out there going, oh, I'd like to ask her a question. And our phone lines are open. I want to give those to you real quick. It's 210 three four zero nine five eight five or if you're in the surrounding area oh look here we go eight seven seven six three zero five seven five seven so we, you call in and you know ask but i'm going to go back to that paper issue you were talking about sure. is that the pile issue oh the paper pile issue my goodness yes my, my husband and i say oh you're gonna go put it in this, this is pile? your pile and yes. this is my pile yes well you i know one, it's somewhere in the middle if if I need a document, it's somewhere in the middle. It, right. Well, my question right. is, is my husband has 
pile after pile after pile after pile <laughs> because he has his business in his home and yes. in yes. the office. And mine does too. And, uh-huh. and, mm-hmm. and so I kind of step over and w- because I'm scared to death to touch anything. <laughs> and it's so funny because he knows what Where it's at. everything is. Yeah. And I, I say that my father's the same way. I walk in his office and he goes, don't touch it. I put that there 14 years ago. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. okay, daddy. But, you know, it's just one of those funny things. Do we have a caller on the line? We do. We have a caller. Debbie, welcome to Girl Talk Texas. Good morning. How are y'all doing? Good morning, Fine. Debbie. Great. You have a question? I, yes, I do. I have a problem with paper. I pay my bills yes. all online. <laughs> So when I get my mail, I take out the junk mail, but then I end up with all these little piles and say, well, I'll get that, get to it later, and I never do. Oh, <laughs> what I do, you do think that. Best? You're not alone. Mm-hmm. Yes, it sounds counterintuitive, that. but if you hate dealing with paper, it's really important that you do deal with it every day. Because if you don't like to see that paper pile, it's just going to grow and grow and grow. Yes. So if you wait till the end of the week, it's larger. You want to put it off. If you wait till the end of the month, it's even bigger. So that's when you yes. shove it off into a box and you forget about it. So you want to think about it like brushing your teeth. You need to brush your teeth every single day, otherwise bad things happen, and that's the same thing that you need to do with your paper. So when you are done paying your bills, you want to have the easiest system possible for you to put your papers away, because a complicated filing system is going to make you not want to do it. So one of the simplest things to use is either an accordion file, that's a little Mm -hmm. folder that separates out into the different months of the year, January through December, or you can use hanging files January through December, and when you're done paying paying your bills, you just drop it into that slot of the month. If you ever have to go back and find anything, you'll have a basic idea of when it happened, but otherwise you'd much oh, rather okay. spend your time on that end looking for the paper than spending 30 minutes on a fancy filing system when you probably will not need to look at that paper again. That makes sense. That awesome. is. So accordion file. Does that help you out, Debbie? Yes, it does. I like that. That's good. <laughs> well, thank you so much. You're welcome, Debbie. Thank you have for listening day. today. You have a blessed Best day. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. It, well, and it's funny because my husband, actually, our um, filing system for the past few years has been, you know, the big box that has the year 2011, 2010, 2000, you know, all of those. Mm-hmm. So we had the big box. So if we ever needed anything, oh, my goodness, it was a 45, 50-minute process to go back and try to, oh, no, that, oh, it happened in January. Well, it's November. Mm-hmm. Now i got to go find it again. So this year we actually did do that, and I'm very proud. But That's as good. our bills are paid, we go to that accordion file, and January is there, February is there, and then any receipts I accumulate that I need to keep that might be tax worthy or whatever they go in by the month very good and then it's all ready at the end of the year so yeah. when it's tax time it's nice and bundled mm-hmm. together right. now we spoke earlier about uh sprint sprinting versus marathon and what should we be doing daily i like how she said daily but what is it that we should be doing daily it really depends on what you have going on in your life but i want to backtrack to those two terms that you mentioned linda was telling me about a project that she was doing where she dove in and she spent so yes. much time working on it that she wound up hurting her shoulder yes so we talked about two different work styles. There's marathoning where you can go hours and hours and hours and still be perfectly fine at the end. And then there's sprinting where you work for 15 minutes at a time or 30 minutes at a time. And there's no right way to do it. It's the way that's best for you. So marathoning may not have worked for you because you wound up getting injured. (laughs) And then you're down for the count. And I can do it fast. (laughs) Exactly. And so what you might want to do is step back and take a look at your project first and think about what exactly exactly do I have to do to complete this project? Mm. That way you can break it down into smaller steps and you can decide, okay, I can handle doing this for two hours or you know okay. what? I think I should only do 30 yes. minutes because I might go crazy yes. after that. And that's exactly what happened. I can remember standing in my kitchen. I had been reading the Old Testament and I didn't know what to do in my house because it was just everything and I was having so grip that night and I said, Lord, oh, how what? does Solomon, how did all of these yeah. all, he, he slew, you know, he, he, he uh, sacrificed all of these animals as unto you how did he do all of that and i was frustrated and the lord spoke to me in my heart and he said one at a time 
Yes. One oh, at a that's time. Good. That is one so at a time. true. Exactly. You take one small part at a time. So you could look at your kitchen counter, divide it up into a checkerboard, either mentally in your mind, drawing squares, or physically with tape, and you work on one checkerboard square at a time. Or if it's your dining table or your, your desk in your office. Well, we need to, oh, this is so good. We need to take a break once more. Uh, when we return, we'll continue our conversation with Helene Segura of Living Order SA. Just keep it right here. You're going to hear more on Girl Talk Texas on AM 630 KSLR. 